During wartime, communication is all important. Armies and their generals would have to communicate somehow, and obviously this needed to be done in secret. Subsequently, the game was on to find ways to crack the code. The British had a computer called Colossus. This was a big machine. Its input was a continuous loop of paper tape with punched holes in. This huge machine was programmed using switches and plug panels. Colossus used fermionic valves since this age was before the age of transistors. Colossus was designed by Tommy Flowers to solve a problem posed by mathematician Max Newman at the Government Code and Cipher School at Bletchley Park and is considered to be a first generation computer. The Nazis had their own code machines, Lorenz which was used by the German High Command and the Enigma which was used by troops out in the field. In August 1941, German operators made a big mistake which allowed the Allies to crack the German code. Previously, the code would just look like a bunch of jumbled up letters, but now they had a way to decipher these otherwise nonsensical strings of letters into something that could be read by a human being. Although in the end, Colossus didn't crack the Lorenz code. It was still an amazing feat of engineering. Another example of a first generation computer is the ENIAC. ENIAC stands for Electronic Numerical Integrator and Computer. Like Colossus, this was also a very large machine. But unlike Colossus, which was a dedicated machine, this was for more general purpose. The ENIAC machine was built in the USA at Pennsylvania University. Although it was possible to program these computers, it was extremely time consuming. It's the late 50s and the second generation of computers is made possible by a breakthrough in technology. This breakthrough is called the transistor. It might not look much, but it's a fraction of the size of a valve which is the technology it replaced. This meant that computers now Almost didn't fill like rooms. You could get them into, well, the size of a cupboard. A machine with many of the characteristics of the human mind. As early as the 1950s, people speculated that computers would be able to think for themselves. Alan Turing, a British mathematician and computer scientist, came up with the idea of the Turing test. This test, meant that a computer would have to fool a human being into thinking that it was a human being. During the 1960s, the third generation of computers was made possible by the introduction of the integrated circuit, otherwise known as the silicon chip. These new computers were smaller, more cost effective, they had keyboards and they even had floppy disk drives, making data truly portable for the first time. microprocessor really changed things for computing industry. The CPU was now in one single chip rather than being spread out across a circuit board or even racks. The 80s and the 90s saw an explosion of new computers, especially a personal computer which was available for the first time. It was the ZX81 before that there was a ZX80, there was a ZX Spectrum, there was Commodore, there was Amiga and many others. Before long, Tim Berners-Lee, while at CERN, devised the idea of what we now call the Internet. By now, computers are involved in everything that we do, from sending email to doing our shopping, or making big business deals. 
we've gone from computers that could fill a whole room to a computer that is so small that it can fit into our pocket and yet is much more powerful. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give it a thumbs up and come check out my channel.